the last episode, I showed you how to create a checkout process using PayPal. So when you add a few items to your cart and then click on the checkout link, and then that takes you to the PayPal site with the same items in your cart where you can enter in your billing information and complete the order. The problem is that once you do and you complete the purchase and then go back to our site and return to our shopping cart page, well, those items are still in our cart. Even though we checked out and completed the purchase, our website application never got uh, con confirmation uh, that the purchase was complete, so it didn't know to clear out the items and create a new cart. So we need to get notification from PayPal about the status of the order when the user checks out. So this is what the checkout process currently looks like. We have two different servers, our server and PayPal server. And so we have the cart page the client goes to, and then when they click checkout, they go to PayPal server, they enter in their billing information, complete the purchase, get the receipt, and then they have the option of returning back to our site. The problem is the checkout happens entirely on PayPal server, so we don't know the status of it. Well, the solution to this problem is called IPN, or Instant Payment Notification. And this is a service that PayPal provides to notify your web server of changes to an order or purchase. So that way we can tell if the user successfully purchases or not. And this is just basically an asynchronous call made to our server directly from PayPal. The problem is, is that it is asynchronous, so uh, there may be a slight delay after the purchase completes. Unfortunately, there's no easy solution to this. Uh, usually it's just a few seconds, but um, there have been cases where it's a longer if there's a backlog on uh, PayPal's side. So to use this service, we have to create a URL for PayPal to send us notifications to. And to do this, I like to create an entirely new resource and model with the database backing it called Payment Notification. Uh, so this way, every time PayPal sends a new notification, it actually creates an entirely new model and row in our database. A nice side effect of this is that there's an entire log of notifications that's kept inside of our database, so we can always look back at them. All right, so we need to generate a new resource here. I'm going to use my nifty scaffold generator, which I'll link to in the show notes for more information. It just basically behaves like a normal scaffold generator uh, with a few exceptions. Anyway, what I want this model to be called is payment notification, and I want to give it a few columns. Uh, one is I'm going to give it one called params, a text-based column, and this is just going to store all of the parameters that PayPal sends us uh, in a hash, a serialized hash. And I want to store some of the parameters outside of this just to make, up, make looking up uh, notification records easier if we need to. So I want to store a cart ID so we can reference which cart this given notification belongs to and uh, our status, so we can see if it completed successfully or not, and our transaction ID, which is a unique identifier PayPal sends us to for uh, identifying the given transaction for the notification. And then finally, I want to define what actions I want in my controller. In this case, I want the create action, uh, because that's the only thing I want to do with payment notifications currently. And then I'll just migrate my database. So now we have this create action in our controller where PayPal can send its payment notifications to. But currently it won't be able to access this action because of Rails' built-in uh, request forgery protection, which is enabled by default. So to disable this for this action, we need to call uh, protect from forgery and then accept this one create action. So that way um, PayPal will be able to access this without having to pass in the authenticity token. Now I also want to clean up this controller action a bit. All I really want to do is just create a payment notification and then uh, render nothing. And of course the parameters need to be sent into here are a little bit different than normal. I'm going to have a params option parameter which you can pass in. I'm just going to pass in all the parameters into it so we can log all those and a few other things as well. I want to do my cart ID which is going to be um, the invoice number for the order, and also the uh, status, which is the payment status, and finally the um, transaction ID, which is the transaction ID. There we go. 
Now, if you're ever wondering what kind of parameters PayPal is passing to this action, I encourage you to check out the order management integration guide that PayPal offers. This is the PDF uh, version, and I'll post a link to this in the, my show notes because it really is uh, one of the best guides and documentations I've seen on the IPN. And it, come, it has along with it all the list of the different parameters that PayPal uh, might send to that action. And for example, payment status here has all these different values that it might check or send to uh, to the action when it sends the no notification. So what about this payment notification model? Well, we want this to belong to our cart because uh, it has a cart ID column. And we also want to serialize our params attributes. So we can just call serialize. Uh, this is a little known method in Active Record, which will convert the params attribute, which is going to be a hash object, it'll convert it into YAML format when it saves it to the database and unserialize it when it takes it out and reads it. So this way we can always treat the params attribute as a ha hash instead of worrying about saving it as a string in the database. Rails will do that for us. And we also want to have an after create callback on here. Uh, let's call it mark cart as purchased because if the notification says our order was purchased successfully, we want to mark our cart as such. So we can make a private method down here called the same thing. And here we just want to check if our status is uh, completed, then we'll want to um, mark our cart as purchased. So we can say update attribute. And I already have a purchased at column on here. I'll just set it to the current time. So it's considered purchased. So now whenever we create a payment notification with the status of completed, it'll mark our cart as purchased. Now inside of my application controller, I have this method called current cart, which is used to fetch, uh, well, the user's current cart. Now I need to change this behavior a little bit so that when, uh, if the cart is, is purchased, that it creates a, recreates a new cart and resets the current cart. So I'm just going to paste this in here because this is fairly application specific. Basically, it just resets the session's cart ID if the current cart is purchased, and then it ends up recreating that cart. Now, there's one more piece of the puzzle that we need to do to get this all working, and that is that we've never told PayPal to use this create action to send notifications to. Now, remember in our last episode, there's a whole bunch of attributes that we're passing inside of our checkout link, and one of those that we can pass is called notify URL. And this will do exactly what we want. It's just basically telling PayPal which URL to send notifications to. So inside of our cart model here, this is where we're defining that PayPal URL. So here we just want to add a notify URL option. And since I don't have access to the URL helpers here, I'm just going to pass it in as a parameter here at the top. And so inside of our shopping cart view page where we call the PayPal URL method, we'll just pass in the URL for our notifications. And this case is going to be the payment notifications URL. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be very difficult to test on this computer here because it's just my local development machine. And notice our URL here is just pointing to localhost port 3000. Well, of course, that's going to be the URL inside of our checkout link and PayPal won't be able to access that directly uh, for posting notifications for obvious reasons. So to test this properly, we really should set up a staging server that can be publicly accessed by PayPal, but that's a little bit out of the scope of this episode right here. So what I'm going to do is just simulate the payment notification when I check out here. But let's try this, let's click check out, and then we'll log in as our buyer account then we'll choose pay now. So now our order is complete and this is where PayPal would send the payment notification if it could access our server. So let's use this and just simulate our payment notification. So to do that, I'll just use this curl command here, pass in the necessary attributes that I just need to simulate this and send it on its way. And notice I got nothing back in the response, so that's a good sign, must not have been an exception. And now for the moment of truth, let's return to Ryan Bates' store Let's try adding something to our cart. And there we go, completely blank cart, all fresh and new, and our previous cart is marked as purchased. And that's how we can handle payment notifications from PayPal. Uh, there's still quite a bit of things we need to do with this application, especially regarding security, because right now uh, anyone can go into this checkout link and fiddle with the prices in the URL. It's very easy to do that. 
and you can also even spoof being PayPal when you submit the payment notification and so on. So there's a lot of security issues here we need to address and I'm going to do that in the next episode. So in the meantime, have a good new year and I'll see you then. Just a real quick announcement here. Um, I just released a new series uh, with the Pragmatic Programmers called Mastering Rails Forms. And I have a few episodes out now. They're just $5 each for about half an hour each. And so check them out at pragmatic.tv and keep an eye on it as well because I plan to release uh, a few more episodes in this series in the future. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.